This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Omega Bright CBD. Formulated by Omega Bright Wellness, creators of the number one omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Omega Bright CBD, safe, third-party tested, and it works. Shop online at omegabrightwellness.com. We're starting to get some uh, opening up of the economy and opening up of the restrictions that have been in place for the last several months. Our Mm -hmm. pets have gotten very used to us being around. And so one of the concerns is, is that when we all start going back to work and resuming our more normal routines, how are our pets going to be affected? And for some pets, they may struggle with some separation anxiety. The cats, on the other hand, will probably be celebrating, but, you know, (laughs) Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell, and welcome to Distraction. Today, I am welcoming a guest, and you could guess all day long, and you would not guess what she does. A really unique niche in the helping profession. She's in my favorite helping profession, namely, she's a veterinarian. But she has a very special niche in the world of veterinarians, aside from being a a general veterinarian and treating Uh, dogs and cats and whatnot. She is the president of the Canadian Association of Veterinary Cannabinoid Medicine. Isn't that something? I asked her how many members does it have, expecting her to say about four. 350. Canadian Association of Veterinary Cannabinoid Medicine. And in addition, She's the owner of Greenwood Veterinary House Call Services, which is, sounds like angels of mercy. They make house call for hospice and palliative care to these little dogs and cats and, I suppose, birds and gerbils. I don't know. But, uh, but in any case, the idea of, of going in and delivering palliative care, uh, being a dog lover myself, I know how much that must mean to the patients or clients, whatever she calls them. In any case, I won't keep talking. I want to welcome, I think, the most unique guest we've ever had on Distraction, Dr. Sarah Silcox, who comes to us from just east of Toronto in Canada. Dr. Silcox, welcome to Distraction. Thank you so, so much. I, I'm speechless after that introduction. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm speechless to have met you. I really, I, 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 you could have knocked me over with a feather. That, that how long have, have you been doing this uh, cannabinoid medicine for pets? Uh, so the association was founded just, we just celebrated our third anniversary. So mm-hmm. we founded in June of 2017, which was uh, just more than a year before Canadian legalized cannabis for not only medical use, which had been legalized for some time, but also for non-medical or recreational use. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and why would someone give their pet CBD? You know, I think much like on the human side of things, CBD has been touted as as a bit of a cure-all. And I think that's one of the things that we work to really clarify is that it's not snake oil. You know, there's a, a solid basis to how it works from a medical perspective. That's but on the sure. same token, yeah. it's also not a cure-all. It's a yes. very specific medicine that's going to work um for different conditions and in different patients, it works a little bit differently, but the most common things that pet families are telling us that they're choosing to use it for, um, include things like chronic pain, um, anxieties, behavioral disorders, general inflammation, skin conditions, um, trouble Mm -hmm. sleeping. Um, so there's really a broad range and, and that's understandable once we start to understand how CBD and other cannabinoids work in the body, that it's able to treat a whole range of different problems, potentially. We're still waiting on some of those published studies to come out. Interestingly enough, our sponsor, uh, Omega Bright, makes a CBD product specifically for dogs. Yeah. Have you heard of Omega Bright? It's a, it's a wonderful American company. They, they, they started off with fish oil and uh, omega-3 fatty acids uh, supplements, and then they just came out with their CBD supplement for humans. Yeah, and, and, then they, and they also for, have one for dogs. 
humans, and then they've expanded that into the, the pet yeah. world as well. And I think we're, yeah. we're seeing a lot more of that in the U.S. compared to Canada, because in Canada, our regulations are a little bit different. So even though it's technically legal, it's only legally available through certain regulated channels. And yeah. as of yet, that hasn't included a market specifically for pets. In Canada, people are either purchasing uh, products sold outside that legal pathway Mm. that are pet specific or they're purchasing legal products intended for human consumption and then giving those to their animals. Well, since most of our listeners are in the United States, uh, although they actually are around the world, but uh, for our listeners, if they wanted to get CBD for their dog or other pet, they could just go to omegabrightwellness.com and there it would be. So why would they do that? You, you mentioned you mentioned anxiety. How can you tell if your dog or cat is anxious? Well, I think there's a wide different, or, or sorry, a wide range of things that can cause anxiety. We have situational anxiety, so sometimes it's just a short-term thing, like thunderstorms yeah. or a trip to the vets or the groomers. And other times, yes. we're dealing with more generalized anxiety and behavioral disorders and separation anxiety, which you know, funny enough, is getting a lot of attention. As you know, in certain areas, maybe not in some of the states, but certainly here in Ontario, we're starting to get some uh, opening up of the economy and opening up of the restrictions that have been in place for the last several months. Our mm -hmm. pets have gotten very used to us being around. And so one of the concerns is, is that when we all start going back to work and resuming our more normal routines, how are our pets going to be affected? And for some pets, they may struggle with some separation anxiety. What a great point. I hadn't thought of that. What a great, and of course they would. Of course yeah. they would. They'd feel abandoned and, and anxious. Yeah. Yeah, the cats, on the other hand, will probably be celebrating, but, yes. you know, Mel, <laughs> thank goodness the humans are gone. Exactly. Um, but our dogs, I think, a lot of them have really come to, to enjoy us being around a lot more. Well, I'm a dog person, not a cat person, but I, I, I do appreciate the the uh, feline independence, but I, I, I'm drawn to the canine affection. But, yeah, that's such a good such a good point, Sarah, that when... When we, we've been with them all the time and then we leave them and of course they'll be sad. They'll be standing. I can see our dog standing at the, at the door waiting for us to get home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you said pain. So if they have arthritic hips or something like yeah. that, CBD might help. Yeah. Yeah. Chronic pain is probably the number one reason that people have, have looked to cannabis-based therapies, both for themselves as well as their pets. Um, but it's also one of the ones that's been looked at most, most commonly in our published studies. So we now have a few published studies that have looked specifically at using high CBD cannabis products for the treatment of arthritic pain in dogs. Um, we also have a published study that's looked at the use of CBD for treating epilepsy in dogs as well. And so all of those studies have been very positive. Certainly more work still needs to be done. Um, it's not cut and dry. There's always lots of confounding factors. And it's certainly not something that I would recommend people do without consultation with your veterinarian. It is still a medicine, even though you can order it online, you don't need to go to your veterinarian to get it. Um, but we do want to make sure that it's a suitable product that we're maybe not missing something else, and also make sure that there's no possible drug interactions. And that's something a lot of people don't don't consider. They don't consider drug interactions? That's right. That's right. So yeah. if your pet's on other medications for a chronic health problem and you decide to add in a high CBD product, there's the potential. And we're again, we're still learning this area is so new to us from a, a medical perspective. But it, it certainly appears that there can be the potential for some drug interactions because CBD can affect the way our body metabolizes drugs. Mm. And also, you're, I'm very intrigued by your uh, your Greenwood house call services. What what are the kinds of conditions of, like a dog who's dying of cancer or something? Or yeah, so I mean, really, it encompasses a range going anywhere from those senior patients who are just struggling a little bit more. Uh, the sh the focus has sort of shifted away from finding a diagnosis and finding a cure to really trying to keep that patient as comfortable as possible mm -hmm. um, up to patients who've been diagnosed with life limiting diseases like cancer or those who have reached end of life and the family wants to have that end of lifetime 
be at home where the pet's most comfortable and where mm -hmm. they're probably more comfortable as well. Sure. And that's the one downside of having a pet that they die, uh, usually before you do. Yeah. 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 And I don't know how many times I've heard people say, never again, I'm not going to do this. It's too hard. But fortunately, yeah. I think given given enough time, our hearts are, are able to see how much joy they brought. And in most yes. cases, I think families end up opening their heart to another pet. Yep. We, we've done it five times now. Yeah. Every time yep. it's it's so hard. But uh, It's a testimony uh, to how much joy they bring us when, when we're willing to go through that pain yeah. all over yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for the past three months, I've been taking a new supplement called Omega Bright CBD. And listeners know that bright is spelled B-R-I-T-E. So it's Omega, B-R-I-T-E, CBD. As I've mentioned before, Omega Bright CBD was created by my good friend, Dr. Carol Locke, graduate of Harvard Medical School, and her company, Omega Bright Wellness. They've been making the number one omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Well, Carol and her team decided to break new ground, having set the standard for purity, safety, and efficacy in the world of omega-3s, and they've brought that same commitment to excellence to their new CBD supplement. I take it myself. It helps me with my reactivity, my impatience, it kind of uh, just puts a, a smoother edge. It's it, In no way is it a, a buzz or a high, anything like that. It's way more subtle. But it's a very noticeable, subtle effect and one that I've come to really appreciate as I take it every day. So, all right, get Omega Bright CBD online at omegabrightwellness.com. And now distraction listeners can save 20% on their first order by using the promo code PODCAST2020. That's PODCAST2020. Go to OmegaBrightWellness.com and order Omega Bright CBD. You'll be glad you did just as I am. What do you have yourself? I have one cat named Marvin, and I have uh -huh. a, uh, let's see, he'll be 13 in the fall, a little miniature pincher, and then uh -huh. a great big Argentinian Mastiff. Oh, what are their names? So, uh, his name is Wallace, and the little one is Blackberry. Wallace and Blackberry, that's so adorable. Wallace, <laughs> what a great name for a big dog, and Blackberry, what a great name for a little dog. Yeah. And then Marvin, yeah. and of course. And Wallace is actually um, on cannabis-based therapy as well. So he gets a high ah. CBD product um, every morning and every evening. Wow. And, and do you have kids? I do not. Just my, uh. my furry ones. <laughs> but a husband? Yes. Yeah. And is he a vet as well or is he? No. No. He's mm -hmm. in uh, corporate training. Ah, okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well. So completely different different type of business but thank goodness he's also an animal lover he actually came into the relationship with blackberries so. oh that's wonderful that's wonderful oh that's really wonderful and did you growing up want to be a vet yeah i think when i look back through those you know the little school day treasury books uh it first hit the radar in grade two was, oh yeah veterinarian was on the list of things i'd like to do so many little girls say they want to be a vet but you actually did it I actually did it. Yep. Well, I had I had an interesting uh, background. My dad was very much an animal and nature guy, and my mom was a nurse. And so I think I had both sides of things. So veterinary medicine seemed to be a pretty darn good fit. And what's the process in Canada? How, how do you become a vet? Uh, in Canada, so way back when I went through, uh, you had to have a minimum of of one year of general science and then applied into the veterinary program. Uh, if accepted, there was then a pre-vet year and then a four-year veterinary program. They've changed it up a little bit since then. So now it's a two years and you write your MCATs and go through the application process and then a four-year program. You take the medical college admission test? They do now. Just yep. as if you were applying to medical school? Yes. Wow. Wow. So you have to have a college degree and then take the MCAT, and then four So it's or five a, a minimum of two years of, of science or equivalent, I believe, now. 
to get in. And then, and then mm-hmm. that school is four years, just like medical school. That's right. Wow. And then do you we've specialize? got a lot more species to cover. Yeah, you sure do. And do you, <laughs> so do you get trained in all the species? We do. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that, you know, there are some veterinary schools now that are starting to stream a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, most veterinarians have received training in both large and small animal. And then as they progress through the course and get into that final year, their elective courses can focus more heavily on the area that they they feel like they're going to pursue. So certainly all of my electives were small animals. But, but, but you, nonetheless, you were exposed to how do you deliver a horse or how do you take care yep. of a pregnant? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wow. Yep. And, and you, do you get trained in how to take care of a snake? Briefly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and birds and fish. I was actually going through the garage last week and found a whole bunch of boxes with my old notes in there. And I'm like, wow, we had a lot of lectures on fish that I don't fish, to recall. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and yeah. what about so we birds? Do do the, I mean, the, the full oh. gamut. And, you know, circling back to today's topic, it's really interesting to see um, some of the science that's coming out as we start to look at how CBD and other cannabinoids influence other species as well. Really? Really? Yeah. Are there, have you taken care of parrots? Parents or parrots? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Obviously parents. <laughs> parents, but, not but, so par- much, par- but... Uh, so aging much, parents, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, and both my parents, I also push to have them on medical cannabis therapy um, as they approached sort of senior years and, and end of life. My mom still gets hers regularly. She has both dementia and arthritis, and mm. it helps to level out both of those, Oh, that's I think. wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, you sound like a dream come true of a veterinarian. I wish I lived uh, near you and... You could take take care of our animals. You 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 obviously found your calling. It's a, uh, it's wonderful. And you're a pioneer. You're breaking new ground. You're um, uh, staying young. Uh, you know uh, that that's also impressive. Um, Dr. Sarah Silcox, uh, founding director and current president of the Canadian Association of Veterinary Cannabinoid Medicine and owner of Greenwood Veterinary House Call Services. What a what an angel uh, of, of animals you, you are, for sure. I can't thank you enough for joining thank us. You. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me on and sort of introducing your audience to some of the potential uses for those CBD products in pets. Yes, thank you indeed. And what a unique and wonderful guest you've been. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Now I just have to read some credits. Please, listeners, reach out to us with your questions, comments, and show ideas, and we really do love getting them, by sending an email to connect at distractionpodcast.com. That's connect at distractionpodcast.com. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. Our recording engineer and editor is Scott Person, and our producer is Sarah Gurton. I'm Dr. Ned Hallowell, your host, saying goodbye until next time. The episode you just heard was sponsored by Omega Bright CBD, formulated by Omega Bright Wellness, creators of the number one Omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Omega Bright CBD, safe, third-party tested, and it works. Shop online at omegabrightwellness.com.